Welcome into the studio today. I'm quite excited to be talking about a fixative or what Clearfontaine actually calls with their pastel revolution. They call it a freezer, innovation freezer. Okay, so this is what's just come out on the market. It's, it's being shipped out now to the major art stores. So we're looking at this November 2020. Okay, so I've looked at pastel fixatives, as you've probably seen on my videos. I've looked at loads and loads of them. Some are better than others. None of them are actually the holy grail that fix something and we don't see any color change or any tonal change and they actually fix it because as you will have seen probably in my older videos, when things are actually fixed, let me show you some of the older products here that I've tested. There's a Windsor and Newton, there's a Spect Spectra fix there. And what you find is generally, you can spray the fixative and keep spraying and spraying and you think, okay, I'll put up with a color change. It's, just, it's slight perhaps. But what you find then is when you actually do a test, the pigment still comes off. So it, it really makes no difference putting something on that's going to potentially change the color or the tonal value of your pastels and end up not fixing it anyway. So, so what's the point? So Clayfontaine, you know, they're the makers of my favorite paper, Pastel Matte. They've sent me this to try out, this Pastel Revolution. It does um, many things and what I'm going to do in the links below, I'm going to send you to look at them demonstrating uh, various other things that this will do as in when you spray pastel matte paper you can then roll it up and they've got lots of innovations like it says for what this can do but i wanted to concentrate really just on the way it affects pastel itself and how um, that's advantageous for us and also if there's any disadvantages as well so as i said in the links below check out Clayfontaine's site and it'll show you all the other things that this can do. Okay, so let me get rid of the paperwork they sent me and show you what I've been doing. So as per usual, I've been doing my color swatches and uh, testing things out because I like to be as thorough as I possibly can. I want to see what this is going to do to my artwork before I potentially ruin something okay so let me go through it it's not fancy like you see on lots of other um, channels where they've got the zooming in moving images and all the fancy uh, work like that this is really um, down to earth showing you just exactly what you need to know okay what I would want to know so what I've done here I've got a piece of um, light gray which is almost white pastel matte paper I'm using pastel matte throughout because that's the paper I've always loved using. So it, I, I'm not bothering with other paper. So if, if you use a different type of paper, try this out on that. This has been made for pastel matte paper. And I've taken my pastel pencils and what I've done, I've taken a few colors as you can see. So I've used a variety of um, manufacturers. I've got Carbofello there, I've got Pitt, I've got Geoconda, I've got Karen Dash there, Conti there. So I've tried, as I said, lots of different colors. And what I did then, I got some cardboard and I masked off half of it. So you can see my blue line down there. I sprayed this half, this half didn't get any spray at all. And I did exactly the same here. So this is the side I've sprayed there. And this is the side I sprayed on this batch. What you can see is that some colors have been affected by the spray more than others. So with the black, you can barely see it, but the browns, you can see it more where it's darkened and perhaps taking a bit of the richness out. That flesh color you can see is darker. The reds, the yellow, doesn't really make much difference. Um, the greys, when you're looking at these lighter tones, that's where it does seem to darken. When we look at the other pencil brands as well, so the Geoconda, they're all pretty much doing, as you can see, the same thing. And that's why I chose 
similar colors to show that it actually does the same thing on different brands as well. Now the reason it does it, it's a chemical reaction. The alcohol or the solvent, whatever they're using in here, is really liquefying the pigment. It's also slightly liquefying the surface of the paper. So when you spray this, your work has got to be flat. Don't have it at an angle. It says it on the uh, paperwork as well. Don't go putting it at say a, a 90 degree angle. It's gonna liquefy it and it'll run down. Have it flat, okay? Because of that um, chemical or liquefying or freezing as they call it reaction, that's why we get a color change. And you see this on all of the sprays out there, on all of what they would call the fixatives. The disadvantage with the other fixatives, as I said, is that they pretty much don't seal it anyway. So you're going through the chance of a color change for usually nothing. Okay, now you have to try that out for yourself because obviously I haven't tried every single product out there. Even though I spent hundreds, I haven't tried every product. As the artist, you need to decide if the color or the tonal change is, is going to be a no-go for you, is going to be a big issue. You also need to think if this does fix and freeze these pigments as I'll show you later on. So we'll have an in-depth look at that and see if it does what it says it does. Is that good enough for say an underlayer? Okay, so if you're building up layers, what if you could fix the bottom perfectly well? Would that be a game changer for you? You need to decide these things for yourself. I'm just showing you the facts. So that's pastel pencils. So what about if we use soft pastel sticks? It's important to know these things because we may be using sticks as the underlayer. I put plenty of pigment down on there. Okay, this is the spray side again. The spray side is always going to be the darker side. Some people may like it because it's actually going to make your artwork more punchy, more contrasty. Okay, so as you can see again, lighter colours, hardly altered. Hardly anything at all. Those mid-range ones, you can see, have gone darker. Okay, so that's the soft sticks. Very similar, really, to the pencils. Now, sometimes I use pan pastels underneath. So I took a look at that as well. Let's zoom in a bit. Okay, and once again, you can see we've got some color changes. Perhaps not as much, really, with the pan pastels, but this brown is really... Um, gone from being a vibrant brown to looking on the spray side, it's gone more of a, a duller uh, brown there. Okay, so colours are changing somewhat. So if you have seen my other videos, how does this compare with Spectrafix? Because that was one I really liked before that was, you know, potential to use. So I've just done here you know, a, a real rough layering of pencils. I put a brown underlayer down with sticks and then I've just put pencil marks on top. So we've got the clear fontaine this side, we've got the Spectrafix that side. Okay, let's move that out the way. So with the Spectrafix, it does fix it, you know, really quite well compared to, to lots of them. So if we look at it, with no fixative on. Okay, we've got that. If I keep that side up, and then we look at the Spectrafix, and we try that. Less is coming off, but we've still got some coming off. If we take a look at the Clear Fontaine, virtually none is coming off. Okay, so keep that in mind. Is that a game changer for you? Is, you know, the fact this seems to be sealing it down. So let's take a look at that more closely again. Now for me, the colour change um, that we've seen on some of the pencils and the sticks, that would probably be a big enough reason for me not to use this as a final fixative or as a final spray. I'm extremely particular um, on my work and on the color shades and on the tonal value, I'm really, really critical on it. You may not be so, 
critical. You may find this is perfectly fine. Remember, it's not often really we're going to have big blocks of colors like this. We're really looking at it in an extreme way. This is showing up pretty much the worst case scenario, I think, because we've got those, like I said, blocks of colors rather than with wildlife art. And even in scenery, you usually don't have a singled out color like that. The thing that interested me about it was what if this is pastel matte paper again we filled the tooth of the paper because I know a lot of my students they end up doing um, demonstrations or my tutorials sometimes and they say oh I've put too much pastel down I filled the tooth of the paper up when it came time to do the details I couldn't get anything on top of it the only real way you can get away from that then is either use soft pastel sticks and struggle to get detail with those or um, to kind of brush it off, you know, and start again. With this fixative, if it works, and I'll show you what I'm finding so you can decide for yourself, if we could seal that under layer, we could potentially keep going with detail on top, okay? So what I've done, I've took a soft stick because I deliberately wanted to fill the tooth of the paper up. And I've put a lot of pastel down on there and I rubbed it in. And then I put some more on there, okay? I've used my pencil to go on top to make some of these marks, okay? To see how detailed and light I could get them. On this one, I did exactly the same, but I put even more and more pastel on top, something I would never do. I absolutely super saturated it with soft pastel and then tried to put my pencil on top. With both of these, I have then sprayed it with the Clairefontaine pastel fixative. I've let it dry. You should let it dry for about 15 minutes or so, but I let it dry. I walked away and let it dry for a good hour and then I've come back to it. So let's zoom in and take a good look at this. Okay, so have a look at it. You can see I've done this for myself just to have a look and that's with the lots of pastel on there. I've got a light pencil going on top. Okay, you can see that's what my um, students sometimes find if they put too much pastel down on there, or even I found myself, you know, you, you get carried away, you put a lot of pastel down. That's an extreme example, okay? So when I then sprayed it and dried it, you can see that's the difference. If we take a look with a clean cotton uh, swab there, very little com comes off. When you compare it, to that okay so that's the difference virtually all the past you can see is if you can just see it it's just powdery on the surface whereas if I get a clean one again here it's very little coming off and that's why we're then being able to get these crisp marks on there it's doing exactly what I'd hoped it would do it's com almost completely sealing that bottom layer what about when we go even more pastel so it's really really sitting on the surface as you can see I can't couldn't get any more on there okay so that's what you find especially if you use something like um, a Faber-Castell as well a hard pencil it really you see it digging in and pushing almost like a snow plow pushing the pastel either side and up and it's all on there as well I sprayed that, as I said, super extreme example. And what we find then is I'm once again able to get my marks on there. Okay, I've cleaned the end of that. That's the same. That's a, a massive difference. Even if I push that really hard, okay, you can see it's just churning that up. I'll wipe that off. I'll leave that in the screenshot. I'll come over here. That's the difference. So you need to decide, is there going to be an eventuality where perhaps you've filled the tooth of the paper up or it's really important for you to be able to put more layers. Perhaps you've done the under layer, you want to seal it completely and it's almost like starting fresh then on top. You should be able to get many more layers. 
and you could spray this again on that and keep going again. At the bottom here, what I've done is created, as you can see, another little um, area where I put the brown on the bottom, put pencil on top. Done the same year, I sprayed it. So the brown has gone darker again, okay? But I can rub that and virtually nothing is coming off, okay? When I rub over here, same pressure, that's the difference. Okay, so you can see that's really quite dramatic difference. This really is sealing it to the surface of the paper. Another very interesting thing it does. So this is pastel matte paper. This is the anthracite. So that's really as dark as the pastel matte goes. So you can see it's basically just a dark blue gray. If you spray the paper, so once again, have it flat, have it horizontal on your board and spray it. What happens then? It, as the pigment or as the spray sinks into the surface, kind of liquefies it a little bit again. And it does that. So now you've got a much, much blacker pastel mat. And it does this with the darker shades of paper. Okay. So that gives you another option. If you want to, to have a darker paper, you can do it with this um, Pastel Revolution freezer spray. Okay. Now the surface feels the same. So we haven't melted it and then found now we've got a slippery shiny surface. It's not done that. That's perfectly workable with your pastels and you just let it dry and that's how it looks. Okay so that's another thing to keep in mind. So with all these you need to make that decision for yourself. I'd say try out some, um, some of it on some artwork and I'm going to try some on my own artwork to see how it really reacts. We know now it's going to seal it very well. That means you can even, when you watch the uh, pastel mat other videos on their site, you'll see that they, they use this to spray the paper, the finished artwork, and they can actually roll it up and put it in tube. That's a big deal if you're a pastel artist and you're um, shipping abroad or internationally to your customers and you want to send it in a tube that could really be a, a potential game changer. As I said, you've got to try these things out for yourself. It's not incredibly expensive. Some of the sprays are very, very expensive. It costs a lot to actually test out. But I think even a worst case scenario, I think I'm going to be trying this out, especially on underlayers of projects that I know I'm going to be doing a lot of top layers on there. So once again, that's, that's something really to keep in mind. So this is a flamingo, obviously, that I did on a live stream um, a little while ago. I left it at that. I didn't finish it off. Uh, sometimes I like this unfinished look, but it was done as a demonstration, okay, on a live stream. So I thought I'd use some of the Pastel Revolution freezer on that so we can actually see the colours, if they change, if it gets more punchy as well on there. It's not fixed at all, okay? So you can see the pastel. Pastel matte paper really holds pastel well compared to, I think, any other paper. It's got a fibrous surface to it and all the pastel gets kind of um, stuck in between the fibres on the paper surface. So that's why we can get all those layers. With sanded papers, if you think of the sand as small mountains, if we really uh, magnified it, the pastel is kind of lodged in, but it comes out more easily. Pastel mat really holds it in place. You can see a couple of little um, marks on here, little dots, that's nothing to do with spray. I've left it by a window when I went out. Um, typical Welsh weather, it then rained and they all came in and went on there. So that's another reason why I'm using this. But you can see, as I said, it's not fixed at all. And even though pastel mat holds pastel well, and I can rub like that and it doesn't really spread out much, it'll come off the surface. Okay, so if we could get a fixative, it would be nice, but I still love the pastel mat anyway, because it does hold that. And I find with some glassine paper over it, I ship it out then flat and it gets to my destination, no problem at all. 
So let's fix it or freeze it. So here we go, we've got the Passel Clairefontaine Revolution. Make sure it's pointing in the right way. It's a shame it hasn't got kind of like a color or an arrow or something on there, but you know, just be careful when you're using it, you've got it the right way. This is flat surface. I have taped the edges down a little bit because whenever you apply anything that's wet to any papers, they've got a chance of uh, bending and warping up. I'm going to be back probably mm, 12 inches or more and um, I'm just going to spray it quite liberally. So I put a good spray down on there and I'm just going to let that dry. So it should be around about 15 minutes or so and that should be dry. There's not a heavy smell to this. Uh, it's, it's seems to have some sort of a slight perfumey smell in there as well so it's not a, a bad smell okay so left here about 20 minutes or so and um, come back to it has it darkened it's extremely difficult for me to actually tell if it's darkened now if I don't put um, you know a protective area by it and then spray on one section when I'm looking at it, I can't really tell if it's uh, darkened or not. Looking at my test pieces, it, it's saying that it must have. But like I said, these are showing them as um, clumps, areas of singular colours. So you would really see it there. I thought I would see it a lot more uh, here, to be honest. But let's, let's check it out. So that's nice and clean. Okay, the worst area would be the darkest area, the blacks, okay? Very, very little coming off on there. Remember, that's white, so it's really showing it up. Let's have a look at some pink areas. Let's make sure I've got a clean area there. Very, very little. So in theory, and it seems really strange to in this, but in theory, I should now be able to just go like that nothing on my hand that's really i'm impressed with that i must admit that um, i'm getting none or very little pickup on that at all so as i said you need to really make a a decision for yourself on it you know is that a game changer for you it now means you could ship abroad um or, or wherever and be a lot more confident that you're not going to get smudges and smears. People in galleries, if they are um, framing them, there's some galleries that won't, or they don't like pastels because they're afraid that they're going to be accused of smudging something, or they are going to smudge something, or perhaps the uh, mount board that goes around there is going to have pastel dust come on there. But as I said, you need to. If you're interested in this, I'm not pushing the product, I'm not making money out of it. If you're interested in trying it, try it on something like I've done. So it's a bit of, you know, scrap um, material, really. I wasn't too bothered if I'd ruined that. But in all honesty, it doesn't look like it's really changed much, if at all. So I'm very impressed with it. I can see that... I'm going to be using it, I'm sure, for underlayers to seal them in where colours are not as critical. And after three years of using pastels and not being able to um, be confident spraying them, it's going to take me a little while to get some confidence to spray some of my finished pieces that I've you know, spent perhaps 20 hours on. But if I do it, this is the one so far I'm going to use because I've seen nothing else that I would... Uh, really try Spectrafix is the only other one and it in all honesty it doesn't seal to the pastel matte surface like this one so hope you found that useful and I'll see you all again real soon just wanted to quickly mention my patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction it's packed full of pastel videos oil videos as well and those videos are being added to new ones every single month I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies and I take you from the very first blocking in 
all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details. You see everything I do, how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners, it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well. And this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details, tips and techniques. And as mentioned, I've got lots of oil videos on there too, so there really is something for everybody. And you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just $4. Now over a thousand members strong, hope to see you there soon.